Here are some household hacks using a pool noodle that you don't want to miss. For this first hack, I cannot believe I didn't come up with this sooner. So we have buckets that we mop with and they have wheels and sometimes they don't fit in our sinks. Um, and then if you do have a sink that it fits in, sometimes by the time you fill it, it's just too heavy to lift up. So here's a hack with a pool noodle that you don't want to miss. So here's the big secret. Every pool noodle has a hole in it. So I'm going to stick the pool noodle onto the faucet like this. Next, I take the other end of the pool noodle and I hold it down so that it aims in the center of the bucket. I turn the water on slowly. I don't want to turn it on too fast because I want to make sure it's not spraying up the top of this. And I just wait to fill the bucket to the level I want. Now, how easy is this? So simple and no lifting on my part. Now, if you want a longer pool noodle, you could glue an extra length of pool noodle on. Just make sure to seal it all the way around or you'll end up with it spraying. I don't think it's any problem at all for me to stand up and just hold this in place. Now I'm ready to get mopping. Now, a lot of people have trouble with drafts coming in under doors. So next we're gonna work on a little hack. So what I picked up was a pillowcase from the dollar store. This will give me some nice fabric and there are lots of patterns to choose from. So the first thing I do is take a pool noodle and I'm gonna measure my door and then basically put a little mark on the end so I know where I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. And just like before, I'm gonna cut the pool noodle. Okay, there's a lot of ways you can do this next step, but I am going to go for the easiest way to do this. Step. You'll be able to change this up for holidays and more with ease. So I'm gonna take this pool noodle, I'm going to stick it inside, I'm gonna lay it back down on the table so it's nice and flat. Okay, so I could cut it here and stop, but I'm gonna show you just how easy this can be. So I'm gonna go ahead and just wind it instead of dealing with frayed uh, fringy edges from cutting and whatnot. So now I have it all the way rolled up like so. So I'm gonna put a little dab of hot glue here and then I'm just gonna run this along the edge till it's all the way, till it's all the way glued. So this end is open because this is the top of the pillowcase. So all I'm gonna do is stick the pillowcase into the hole. The other side is covered by the other end of the pillowcase like so. Now, remember those Velcro adhesives that we used earlier? We're gonna use them again. And I'm gonna use the seam side. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel off the adhesive and I'm gonna place it kind of where the seam is because I, I wanna hide the seam most importantly. So I'm gonna place that right here on top and I'm gonna do this to the two corners on either side as well. Now I have peeled the backing off and I'm going to stick it to the door. Here it is on the door and I can still open and close the door with ease. Sometimes we have the issue of where to put our brooms and our mops and different things. And a lot of people store them in the closet. But here in Colorado, that's just not gonna work for us because we have winter coats, rain coats, spring coats, every coat you can imagine because our weather shifts so much here. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. So what I've got here is a pool noodle from an old project that's already cut. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take some of the items that I will be using or I do use that I need to put on a space just so I know exactly kind of how far apart to put them. And then what I need to do from here is just take a pen or a pencil or a marker and just kind of mark where this spot is. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark each spot like so. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and make a slit into about half of the pool noodle. Next, I'm gonna flip the noodle over and I've got these great little picture holder strips. They're kind of like Velcro. And I'm going to probably need a minimum two of these. And you're gonna to wanna to put it on the back side of where each of these are because that's where the most of the weight will be. 
So I'm gonna go ahead, now that I've got them both um, together and apart, I'm going to go ahead and peel one side off like so. Make sure to find the back and then I'm gonna go ahead and stick and then I'll peel the back of this and this part will go to the wall. So I'm gonna repeat that for each of these steps. So as you can see here, somebody who lived here previously hung something here. So I'm gonna be covering that space. So I start by peeling the backing off and now I stick and press it on the wall and I need to wait 30 seconds at minimum and follow the package instructions for whatever you use before you hang anything up with this. Now that the appropriate time has waited, has gone by, I just open the pool noodle like so and I stick my broom handle inside. Here they are all hung up and I'm just absolutely thrilled with how easy this was and how it turned out. First, grab a pool noodle and cut it lengthwise all the way down with a craft knife. Next, grab a broom stick or any other kind of stick and wrap it with wood grain contact paper. After that, tape the halved pool noodle to the top of the stick. Then, wrap the rest of the halved pool noodle around the stick creating swirls. Create three to four swirls, taping each section all the way down to the bottom of the stick. If the first half of your pool noodle runs out, tape the other half of the pool noodle to the tape tab, creating one continuous halved pool noodle. Place this into a plastic pot. Cut down the stick to the desired height if necessary. Wrap any excess of the pool noodle into the bottom of the pot so it's sturdy. If the pot feels unstable, add some weight in the bottom using bricks or books. After that, hot glue moss to all sides of the pool noodle so you can't see any part of the noodle. If you want a twinkly look, wrap your topiary with some fairy lights or keep it bare if you want a more natural look. Have a pool noodle and some contact paper left? You can make this. Begin by grabbing your noodle and a miter box and determining what size of frame you would like to make. Measure two inches down from the top of the miter box and mark it. It is very easy for your noodle to roll when cutting so these lines will act as a reference point to keep your noodle straight. Continue marking two inches down across the entire length of your pool noodle. You will be cutting four different pieces to create a photo frame. Each piece will have angle cuts on either end. On the first end, cut a 45 degree angle. After that, slide your noodle down and mark another 45 degree angle cut going in the opposite direction. Continue doing this until you have four pieces to form the photo frame. Please note, if you are making a larger frame, you may need to use more than one pool noodle. Next, cut a piece of contact paper large enough to wrap around your first noodle piece. Roll and stick the piece of contact paper around your first piece. Be sure to flatten out any bubbles or wrinkles as you go along. After that, cut around the ends of your first piece. Leave a small amount of overhang, about half a centimeter, so the contact paper hides the pool noodle when all of your pieces are glued together. Grab a hot glue gun and carefully glue your pieces together. These pool noodle frames have some major thickness to them, so I chose to tape my photo to the backing of the frame using tape. If you are feeling more adventurous, you can play around with wedging the photo within the middle of the frame. If it's the right size, it should stay well. After you've added your photo in the frame, flip it over and do your beautiful finished products. These are so lightweight and easy to handle. For hanging, you can poke a hole right into the backing of your frame and hang it on a nail in the wall. Or if you'd like a more damage-free option, you can use command hooks. 